Right, so today I'm going to be doing a bit of unpacking or decrypting, whatever you prefer to call it. I've got a, uh, a fairly recent TripBot sample here that I'm going to be looking at. So we're just going to open that in IDA Pro. <coughs> okay, so one thing that's quite obvious here is there's a lot of uh, data in the in amongst the code actually you can see these blue bits here are functions and the rest of it is just undefined data uh, that's quite common with cryptors because this will most likely be decrypted at some point and run in memory so the code in between that is either going to be junk code or some form of decryptor now if we look at the imports we can see that most of them are pretty mundane. Uh, these are really just junk code. Uh, you'll probably find that if we just go and have a look at one. Okay, so these aren't actually even referenced at all. So they're just they're just in there for the sake of it to make the uh, import address table look a little bit more legitimate, which is quite interesting. Um, there we go, here's one. So you can see there's all kinds of just weird code that doesn't really look like it's actually doing much. And that's kind of the purpose. So what they will typically do is they will dump a load of junk code into the executable to make it look more uh, legitimate to antiviruses. And the code which decrypts and runs the malicious code will either be hidden deep within this or in a separate, like in one of these code blocks, which will be decrypted by some code hidden deep within that, and then run in memory. So, in order to actually find the malicious code, we need to know how these kind of uh, cryptors work. So I've laid out some functions here. These are the two most common uh, functions used with cryptors. So you've got unmap view of file and nt unmap view of section. Unmap view of file actually calls this one internally. So if we put a breakpoint on nt unmap view of section, we will get calls to both. Um, the purpose of this is to unmap memory. What will quite often happen with cryptors is they will uh, they'll either unmap the memory of their own application and then replace it with a malicious code, or they will run a new application and then they'll unmap the main uh, memory module and then replace that with malicious code. Uh, that's usually done with this function, map view of file, which internally calls nt map view of section. You can use either, but a breakpoint on the latter will uh, work for both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a breakpoint on nt unmap view of section, and we're going to see what happens. I just put in a breakpoint here so I can actually start the application without infecting me. Right, so. Then we're going to use one to put a breakpoint on NT on map view of section. And you can see that's just been here. So what I'm going to do just for illustration purposes is I'm going to open Process Hacker. And we're going to look at the application. So it's at the 400,000 base address. And you see uh, this is the common base address. You can see it's uh, right, uh, copy on right, sorry, and executable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to step through the NT map view of section call so it's actually invoked because right now it's not being called yet. So we're just going to step through to the end and then if we refresh the memory, boom, it's gone. So what's happened now is the actual application's code has been removed from memory. Uh, how this can actually be done means that there must be some other code running somewhere else that unmapped it, else it would just unmap itself and crash. So if we do the k -win debug command to look at the call stack, we can see the return address here. And if we take a look at that, we can see it's an undefined section of data, which most likely means it's been mapped after the executable was initially run. Uh, if we look at it, we can see it's 1E. So if we look in here, 1E, we've got a big section of uh, read, write, execute memory. If we take a look in here, there's no P headers or anything. So that is most likely shell code. You can actually see the imports here so now that the main application has been unmapped it's most likely going to write the malicious code at that same base address so we're just going to go to the OX400000 base address and stick a hardware breakpoint for read and write 
and then continue and that's just been hit as well so you can see it's been called from another undefined uh, location of code so the rep mov sp instruction is moving data from the ESI to the EDI so if we look into the ESI well actually let's look at the EDI first which is the base address you can see it's already just copied the M of the MZ header so we're going to go back to the source which is where it's copying from you can see the MZ header here if we scroll down a bit further the, this program cannot be run in DOS mode string so we know this is a portable executable and if we keep scrolling we will see this uh, section headers and this could just be the P header and the actual application is stored somewhere else in memory but if we keep scrolling in this case we can actually see the start of the code section here so we know the full executable is in memory but if we go back to the start we can see it doesn't start on the section boundary which means that this is not uh, we can't just dump this whole region of memory because it's actually most likely stack or heap space so what we need to do is actually figure out the executable size so we know how much memory to actually dump so for that I have written um, a little application which uses the PE file library you can just use pip install PE file to install this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a script uh, command window paste our code then switch the script language to python because this is actually python code uh, run it which should load the functions into memory then we're just going to get the start address of the uh, p file in memory we're going to switch this over to python and then we're going to call get p file size with this address whoops and uh, we've just decoded the size. If you want to know how this works, all it's doing is copying the first 1024 bytes of uh, data from the PE file in memory, which is the header. Then it's loading the header into the PE file library, and then using the header we can actually figure out the size. First you need the size of the headers, which is usually static, but we'll use that field anyway. Then just iterate each section and the size of raw data is the size of the section so if we add together the size of all the sections and the size of the headers we have the full size of the P executable so now we just want to switch back to WinDebug and then we're going to use the write mem command which dumps memory to disk um, so that's the right mem, then the path in which we're going to dump to. Then we've got here is the L command specifies the limit. So LOX3DE00 will say that is how much uh, memory we should dump. And then the start address is the first parameter. So we just copy that in there. So now it says start at this address and dump this much data to this file. And we just hit return. And we should see here is our dumped application so we can go ahead and close this and then if we open our new application we have the trickbot loader